All right, so today we're going to be talking about inner and outer HTML. So two different properties, very similar, but they do have some differences and some things that you should be aware of if you're using them. So my web page here, pretty simple. I've got a header, I've got a main, and I've got a footer. Two paragraphs inside of here. There's an H1 inside my header and a paragraph inside of here. I've added a click listener on the body element so I can click on pretty much anything on the page. So let's jump in and take a look at the code here. Here's the body. There's my header. Here's my main. Here's my footer. Like I said, two paragraphs, one paragraph, and an H1. Nothing earth shattering here. In my script tag, I'm using the defer attribute to make sure that I'm waiting until after the DOM content loaded event fires, meaning all of this HTML has been read and parsed before this script runs. Inside my script, here's my click listener. So clicking somewhere inside the body. In my CSS, I'm using for my HTML and body element, I've got min height set at 100% of the viewport height. So it's going to fill the page vertically. And that means the body fills the whole screen. I can click anywhere on it. And when I do click ev.target, so ev is my event that's being passed into my listener function for the click event. This event has a target attribute, and that is going to be the thing that was clicked. Okay, so that's the setup. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to get the inner and outer HTML of whatever we click on. So my target is going to have a local name. This is an attribute that belongs to every element. And basically, it's just going to tell me what the tag name is. So if we look inside of here, this is header, h1, main, p, footer, p. Those are the local names. There's no namespacing. If there were, local removes local name removes the namespace. There's no colon, and it's all going to be lowercase. If I use the tag name property, it would all be uppercase. But local name, it's going to be lowercase. So let's put this inside of an attribute. Let's just call it tag, just so we know what it is. Now I'm going to limit this and say, if the tag of the thing that I clicked on is P or H1, then I'm going to work with it just to limit what we're doing on the page. So if tag is P or tag is H1, then I'll handle it. I want to get the inner HTML and the outer HTML. So let's just do these as consoles. Say console log and tag, sorry, target dot inner HTML. And I'll do the same thing with the outer HTML. And you'll see very quickly the primary difference between these two. So as long as I'm clicking on a paragraph or an H1, I'm going to see the inner and a outer HTML coming up here. So H1, I click on it. This is the inner HTML. And this is the outer. So the outer includes the tag. Both of these are strings. That's important to note. If we do type of, add the type of command here, I click again, you can see they are both just strings. They are primitives. All it is, is if I came in here and I did this and I copied that, that's the outer HTML. If I copied this, that's the inner HTML, and it is a string. It's no longer an element. It's not a clone or a copy of the element. It is just a string for that content. So type of is going to be string for both. Difference primarily is that inner does not include the tag, outer does. So if you want to be able to replace something, you can say something like this. I can say target, the thing that you clicked on, dot inner HTML is that or target dot outer HTML is equal to let's do this h3 goodbye so one or the other we can't do both of these I will comment out the the inner if I click here there we go this is now an h3 element if I inspect this 
go into the elements. There it is, H3, goodbye. So we have changed it. By changing the outer HTML, this allows you to pass in any HTML string and say, okay, I'm replacing whatever this element was with this new string. For the inner, I'm not changing the, the element itself. I'm just changing the content, the text that's inside of it. So there we go. It's still this. I clicked on it again. You can see it's still the H1. It's just the text inside that I've changed. The inner HTML is the text that's inside of it. Okay, now using these, let's inner HTML. If I took that and I saved it, let's, um, I'm going to create a, a preformatted tag and I'm going to set the text inside of it to be whatever the inner HTML was. And then I'm going to append that to my main element. Okay, we'll start with just the inner. So we're creating a pre-tag. We're going to set the inner HTML of this brand new pre-tag that we're creating as whatever we clicked on, just the text, the inner text from what we clicked on. And then we're going to append that to the page. So if I click here, there it is. I have now created a pre-formatted tag and I have put this text inside of it. So we can tell by the different uh, font that's being used here. That, yeah, that's a pre-tag. But we basically just copy the string from inside of here and then used it as the content of this new element. Now, inner HTML, it's easy because it's just the content, so it is expected to be a string. It's a little bit different with the outer HTML. So we can say, okay, I've got my, my element string is going to be target.outerHTML. So we're taking the tag and the text inside of it of whatever we just clicked on. I'm saving that as a string. So it's going to be almost the same as this, just the tags are included. That's going to be my string. And now what I can do is I can, if I'm using outer HTML or inner HTML, it will parse the string. So we can say query selector main, Take the inner HTML, and if I just say equals, I'm going to be replacing everything inside my main element. That would be all this. So these would all be replaced, or I can say plus equals and say whatever was in there, I'm just adding a new thing. And because it's this property, it will parse whatever string that I'm passing, and that's going to be my element string, just like this. Okay. So if I click on this paragraph, there we go. I've got two. Here's the pre, which was the inner HTML. And here is a brand new paragraph that was added. If we look inside of main, here's the main element. There's the first paragraph, the second, those were the original ones. And then here's my pre, and there's the new paragraph. So this is just a copy of this string, but it's appended as a brand new piece of the inner HTML and it's the inner HTML or outer HTML attributes that allow us to parse the string. Now, if I don't want to do this, if I don't want to say inner HTML plus equals this, there is one other way. It's a little bit more verbose in the code. You have to write a little bit more, but you can do it this way. So HTML string So we take our outer HTML, same as we did right here. So the first part, that's the same. We get the string that we're going to copy. Now I can use the DOM parser object. So I'm going to create a new parser. And once I have that, I can use that to create a brand new document. So this is like a new document element, which is, if you look at the page, this is right here, this HTML. This whole thing, that is my document element. So that's what we're creating here. We're going to say parser dot parse from string. What's the string that we want to parse? Well, it's the one that we just pulled as the outer HTML. So I say HTML string. 
and we do need to specify the supported type. So like it says here, text slash XML, application XML, or text slash HTML. That's the one we're doing right here. Okay, so what we have effectively done here is we've built a brand new web page. This document, it's a new brand new document element. It's not on the page or anything, but from that, I can now extract this thing that we just got, whatever this outer HTML string was, I'm actually gonna turn that into an HTML element by doing this and then query selector main and I'm going to call the append method, just like we did up here with the pre element, except inside of here, my new document, I'm going to go to its body and get the first element child. Well, honestly, inside the body, it is the only element child. So this is the only child that's inside of there. It is whatever the thing is that we clicked on, whether it's an H1 or a paragraph. So if I click on the H1 right here, we're going to create inside of here a pre-tag that has this text, and then there should be two H, two brand new H1 elements. There we go. So there's the pre, and there's the two brand new H1s, the two different ways of creating it. If I click on this one, I'll get a pre and then two new paragraphs. And there it is, pre and the two new paragraphs, the two different ways of creating it. All right, so that's inner HTML and outer HTML and a few ways that you can work with it. Hope that makes sense. Hope that clears up any confusion you had about the differences between the two and gives you some examples of how you can use this going forward. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. If you're looking for a copy of this code, you'll find a link to it in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.